Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting often rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Japan. Been a while. So this is Kanuska Single Malt Japanese Whiskey 2022 Limited Edition. Cast Strength Non-Chilled Filtered. Yay! Distilled and bottled in... Oh, Japanese here. Kagoshima, Japan. Now, if you really want to have a great review about this, go over to Mac by Kampai Planet. He is the expert for Japanese spirits. He um, is a person from Great Britain that lives over in uh, Japan, and he is the man for Japanese whiskey at the moment. Kampai um, Planet. Now, I really, I was, I was surprised when I unpack this that the bottle was again wrapped um in this nice little bag paper bag here it's almost waxed there's a nice little rubber band around there and then you pull out the bottle and it just has a certain japanese simplicity to it which is an elegant simplicity um you have the beautiful color up here you have the dark spirit here you have the label the japanese um this is made at the uh, distillery um, itself, it's named after the second generation distiller, which is basically, I think, the grandfather of the person or the father of the person who actually built the distillery there. On the side, you have a couple hundred meters or uh, yards away from the um, distillery. You have the longest beaches of Japan and you have the sunset here. Um, you have the Japanese as well as the English here. So you can read a little bit. And the thing they're most... Um, concerned about is the word mellow so we have here even here mellow land let's put that on there so mellow land mellow whiskey all right now this is nine fifty nine percent abv i don't think anything 59 percent can be that mellow um whiskey base number 208179 and um, on the back, it actually says, and I'll read a tiny little bit here in a second, but it's primarily, I'm sorry, the word primarily is incorrect, according to Mac. Um, the, there are sherry casks involved in this, and they are the key, they said here to this. Now, um, I have watched three, in the last couple hours, I've watched three different videos about this distillery. Um, two of them were actually, one had only Japanese with American with English subtitles. One was um, where they interviewed everyone in Japanese and the lady actually translated and um, helped us to um, understand what was being said there. A great tour of the distillery and the other one um, was also about the, the people and the area and the distillery. Um, I feel like I'm a newbie again. Now, if I say for most of you out there, um, name the regions of Scotland. If you have Campbelltown and Highland and Speyside and Isla and um, Lowlands, <coughs> you're just like, oh, of course. If I say SWA, you say Scottish Whiskey Association. If I say, tell me the rules of bourbon or explain to me what bottle and bond means. It's like, no problem. 1897, blah, blah, blah. I feel like a newbie when I go to Japan, Japanese whiskey. Um, I have never been in Japan. I've been in Scotland. I've been in Ireland. I know America. I know where the distilleries are. I visit a lot of them. Never been to Japan. Never seen a distillery there. Everything's based there, basically on the shoku. Um, and then they build from there. Um, in Germany, we have something called an Opsla, which is a schnapps. And that's what the distilleries use as their base. And then they're, okay, we can also make whiskey with the same equipment. In America, it's like, okay, good, we have here our bourbon, and now we can start making single malt. Um, I don't understand Japanese whiskey as well as Mac does and his Kampai Planet. Um, it says here on the side, let's just read this, Japanese whiskey made richer and smoother. Um, so the distillery is located along the beautiful white sands of Japanese longest beach with a magnificent, magnificent view of the East China Sea stretching out in front. This is the scenic location where second generation president uh, Kanutska 
Komaza uh, planned to build his dream distillery. Having inherited his desire to take on the next great adventure, it has become our base for creating new whiskey. This is a single malt Japanese whiskey produced at the distillery between 2017 and 19, made with unpeated malt. It is bottled and has been bottled at cast strength from a blend of barrels with sherry casks as key. Enjoy the flavor as it lingers on your palate like the sun setting slowly over the East China Sea. This is the master blender, um, Yoshizugu Komaza. My Japanese is non-existent. I ask to be excused and, and I apologize for that. All right, what am I going to compare it to? If you've been to my channel at all, I always compare something with something. This is 59%. This is 59.7%. This is a single cask here from King's Barn from the Lowlands. Um, this is six years old. and was aged actually in a uh, first fill bourbon barrel. Now, they're very, very different whiskeys, um, but they're both new distilleries. One Scotland, one um, Japan. Even the color, you can hopefully see totally different um, cast composition here. But both 59, 59.7, this is almost half the price of that. Also, the question is, why should I pay so much for um, Japanese whiskey? I'm going to ask the question now, my question of the day. What Japanese whiskey can you recommend? Now, number one, it has to be available. If you say Yamazaki 18, I'm going to laugh and go, <laughs> yeah, great. Um, some of you might just say uh, Nikka straight from the barrel. Primarily not made in Japan. Sorry. Some of you are going to say then uh, Suntory Harmony. Even that, I'm not sure if it's all made in Japan or not. But hey, why not? Beautiful bottle. And then... It's really, really difficult to name a good whiskey from Japan that is available and affordable. So, please write down below some things that you can recommend. Yeah, there was a Cheetah single grain uh, from Santori, which was interesting. Can't find it in Germany anymore. It was there a couple before the COVID um, pandemic happened after it's gone. So, on the nose. This is different. It's interesting, different, but it's different. I get um, plum wine. I get star fruit. I get a little bit of soya sauce. And I get a little bit here of a... Yeah, of, a, of an Asian type of spice. Hmm. Yeah. If I compare the two, the Konoska to the King's Barn, here I have um, vanilla, barley, and a tiny little bit of honey melon, almost like a honey dew. And here, oh, I get a lot more of a, I get the red wine, I get a little bit of a sherry moment, and I get a lot of the Asian spices in here that I'm not familiar with. I just, I just feel like a newbie. Go to Mac, go to Kampai Planet. He will be able to explain the history and the names and pronouncing everything right. I just don't know. It's like someone looking at the... Um, my wonderful example is at the beginning, it was like, this is Glenn Garrick. Glenn Gary. Uh, but yeah, we don't know how to pronounce name. It's like Buna Habain. Yeah, Buna Habain. Um, we just learn with, the, with, the, with the practice how to do things right. All right. And so I'm still, still, still very much a newbie here with Japanese whiskey. 59%. Cheers. Hmm. It's different. There's a lot of wood. A lot of wood. Um, astringent. There is that red wine. There is that fruitiness going on, plum wine, um, a little bit too much wood, a little bit more astringency. It's hot with 59%. They mellow land, mellow whiskey, nothing at 59% is going to be mellow, mellow. Um, I did, I have diluted this down already. I've tried this, um, stick down to about 48%. It gets much creamier, it's a more oilier. Um, there's much more viscosity. The wood is tamed, the alcohol is tamed a little bit. Not true. The wood is not tamed. The wood is still there with, uh, with water, but the alcohol is tamed. Um, 
This is for me, I'm more of a C to C minus whiskey, to be honest. This is not hitting it for me. It's not doing it for me. It's not hitting that sweet spot where I go, oh, nice. It's rather unique. And I guess I'm just really not open at the moment for new experiences with whiskeys. Hmm. A lot of fruit, a lot of flavor. Not necessarily going in the region that I want the flavors to go into, but hey, that's just me. Now, every time they enter something here from the distillery at a at an international competition and they have the category of Japanese whiskeys, no age statement, they almost always win. I think uh, Mac mentioned there was 50 different entries and they were in the top three. So they're doing something very right, but there's a long lasting woody tannin astringent moment going on at the end, which just doesn't do it for me. And these are flavors that are unaccustomed to my palate, to be honest, in a whiskey. Yeah, I'm going to stick with my C minus on a good day with water. It could be a C. Value for money, D. I would never go out and pay 160 euros. That's what I paid for this, basically. I've seen it now for 150, but it's 160 euros over here. Officially recommended retail price. Way too expensive. Way, way, way too expensive for the taste experience and for the bottle you get. Yes, it's made from distillate from 2017 and to 18 and 19, but still, it's three-year-old whiskey, people. 160 euros for a taste experience where I'm not going wow. Now, other people have gone wow. Other people have gone wow crazy for this bottle and have stashed away a couple, and they're really looking forward. There's a 2021 limited edition. Um, there's been other editions as well um, where they've put out stuff there. Um, yeah, if you like Japanese whiskey and you want something new, this is the distillery to look for at the moment. I personally, if I had a choice, I would go over to the King's Barns, especially this single barrel here from the um, bourbon. It's a more of a um, aroma profile I'm accustomed to, I like, I enjoy. Hmm. 59, 59.7. This is, to use their own words, mellower. There's a little bit of alcohol at the end, but for almost 60%, this is amazingly smooth. All right, compared to that, that has bite, that has aggressive, that has wood tannins and so on. Um, this is, mm, this is, eh. All right, so that's my personal opinion. As I said at the very, very beginning, um, Go to Mac, come pie, whiskey. I might actually link it down below that you know from someone who actually knows some st stuff. This is my novice, beginner, uninformed opinion here, even though I've watched all these videos, tried to inform myself, tried to get a good picture of what's going on there. Um, what I did not mention, um, the parent company actually spun them off. Diageo has now become a partner with an investment firm and therefore has a little bit of worldwide distribution. Diageo is now involved. If that's something of a problem for you, um, some people at the moment are actually boycotting Diageo products. Think about that. You might have to boycott them. You might have to boycott other distilleries. Diageo invested in Stowning up in the, on the, uh, up in the um, Denmark as well. Have to boycott them as well. Um, so that's always one of those questions of um, do we really want to encourage people to boycott, for example, Diageo? Or do we just want to say, hey, this is an interesting product from a good distillery that's making good stuff um, in Japan. They're new and we want to follow along that journey with them becoming maybe a powerhouse in the um, Japanese whiskey sector. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, wishing you all the best. And don't forget to comment what is your favorite Japanese whiskey that is affordable and available. Good luck. Bye bye.